Hey, it is fourth quarter and things are selling. Let's get into it. Okay, something I wanted to talk about real quick is the backwards hat issue. I get a lot of crap because I wear backwards hats all the time on YouTube. I don't care. People give me crap about it. I, I'm not offended. I'm not. Uh, but it's, an, it's a thing for some people, evidently. The deal is my hair. Yeah. So I wear a hat. And then when I'm standing out here, the hat casts a shadow on my face. So don't have to do my hair and don't have a shadow on my face. That's the solution. I pick up steampunk safety glasses whenever I find them. Uh, as long as they're not like, I found some for like $25 a pair and that's crazy. Um, these sold for $25 free shipping. They always sell fairly quickly and for a decent price. If you can pick these up for less than, for $5 or less, you're gonna make some money. Uh, these are Wilson, the lenses unscrew. I had to clean them up, but uh, $24.99 free shipping. I picked this thing up the other day at an estate sale where I, uh, wow, that sun really changed the lighting. Um, picked this up the other day at an estate sale where I uh, got a whole bunch of stuff. And the mod in Mod and Pop Thrift is because I cut my teeth on reselling doing mid-century modern seven or eight years ago. This is a mid-century modern piece. It is like a fiberglass thing that you would sit on a shelf and put succulents in. I paid $2 for it at an estate sale and I ended up selling it for buyers all in at $35, it, but there was a lot of shipping. It sold for $19.99 plus shipping. My name's Judah. This is Five Kids Shop Peoria. We picked up, we picked up two t-shirts for $1 a piece. This one sold for Eleven dollars free shipping, and this Harley Davidson one sold for eleven ninety nine plus shipping. Where's it from on the back? Show the back again. Where's it from? It's from Chris. Wait, Crystal River, Florida. And it's got some manatees on the back of it. Cool. Anything else you want to say? To your fans. That's what what sold. <laughs> All right, taking a cue from my guy Matt over at Front Range Flips, I started looking at the book section a little bit, um, and he says that he always he does well with sets of books. So I noticed that these all had the same author. I checked the fronts, and they say. Book one, two, three, and four of the Dresden Files. Um, and so I was like, well, if there's one, two, three, and four, then those are probably worth picking up. They were 50 cents a piece, so I have $2 into them. And they sold for, I want to say $22.99 free shipping, but they go media mail, so they only cost three bucks to ship. So I'm like at least $15 profit on these books. So that worked out well. And then I didn't need somebody to tell me that I ought to look, but if I'm not looking at books, I'm not finding a hardcover copy of Fellowship of the Rings from uh, 1980, and that one sold for $7.99 free shipping, but again, it was 50 cents, so that's pretty decent. And this little car, we learned two things from this little car. See, it's missing the tires, rubber tires. This guy's missing his head, and it's completely untested. I have no idea whether or not this thing works. Um, I suspect it probably needs something in order to work. It sold for $9 free shipping. Uh, is that worth my time to list? Probably not. Uh, because it'll cost like $3 to ship. Uh, maybe $3.25. Which only leaves me like $4 profit in it. But where I got it makes all the difference. I bought a lot of toys. And rather than throwing that away... I listed it because A, it doesn't end up in a landfill, B, somebody can do something with it and enjoy it, and I can make a little bit of money. Um, and I was buying the toys anyway, so rather than just scrapping that and saying it isn't worth my time, I took three pictures, I listed it, and I made four or five bucks, and, uh, and it doesn't end up trashed. 
So I said we learned two things. Thing one, don't just throw away things that come in a lot just because they're broken. Even if that car wasn't worth selling all by itself, you could lot all of the toys together in that and have them be a, a junk drawer lot, um, which I have a pile of things that I'm going to list as a junk drawer lot. And it, it saves that stuff for somebody who can do something with it. And uh, thing two... Buying things in bulk lots sometimes will yield profits that you just don't see coming. Insist on putting what making you guys watch me dig through this stupid box. There's JLA Lost Ghost Stories Golden Age and Darkness Falls. Those sold. Those sold for twelve ninety nine plus shipping. They sold on the uh, Globo Gym shipping program. Oh, hello. I'm white. The pi buyer paid a whole lot more than I made on them. I don't know what they paid international. I don't know where they're going, but they are. Uh, they did sell international, so that that is an expensive program for the buyer, but it works for me the same as if a domestic person bought it. You find these from time to time, older checkers in a box. I found three or four of them this year. These sold for $8 plus shipping. Uh, just make sure that they're complete and you're not paying more than a dollar for them. And you'll make some pretty decent money. Nothing much to say about that. Okay, and so this next item I picked up at a garage sale. And I was quite surprised that they were 75 cents. But they are kids shoes. They are... Jordan 1 low tops, and they're not in stellar condition, but considering they're children's shoes, children don't take, my kids don't take very good care of their shoes. So these sold for a best offer. No, they, I don't, let's find out. I had them listed for $23.23, uh, yuck. Um, and they, I got a best offer for $20 free shipping and I paid 75 cents for them and they'll go in a, Region rate A box, I w they would go in a priority flat rate, but I don't want to see them get damaged. Not that there's much to damage, but anyway, I feel like priority flat rate's not the right way to go with that. So they're, uh, they'll go region rate A box easily. And, uh, I'll make, I'll make over $10 on them. Um, even after cost of goods, shipping and fees. So, for 75 cents, that's a pretty that's a pretty good return. You'll notice a lot of my sales today are small, but I'll end up making a couple hundred bucks. On January 2nd, I walked into Walmart and they had a bunch of these ugly Christmas sweaters marked down to one dollar. Um, and I bought five or six of them. Um, I could have bought a whole bunch, but and if I was doing it now, I probably would have bought a whole bunch, but anyway. I have one left. I think I bought six or eight of them and I've sold through them all except for one that's left in that box right there. And this one sold for $13.49 plus shipping and I'm only a dollar into it. It'll cost me like, well, it doesn't matter what it costs me to ship because the buyer paid the shipping. More of these Christmas light bulbs sold for $12.99. That's a uh, item that I'm well into the profit on and they're free shipping and they cost like $4 to ship picked up these wrestling figures and I know some wrestling figures can be really good and some of them can be this not very good so this is a two pack and I paid five dollars for it thinking that because they were new in package that they would be good and I couldn't find a comp on them when I was at Goodwill so I took a chance on them figure five bucks is not a big deal these sold for $12.89 plus shipping and they sat around forever so it wasn't really a good investment I'll make five dollars on my five dollars in but you guys saw I made $14 on the last item and it was, uh, I only paid a dollar. So that's not the kind of return that I like to double my money on five bucks. But I like to take a little bit of risk because to see, uh, I'd rather pay $5 for something and make a little bit of money than leave stuff behind and uh, not learn about it. But now I know, now I know not to buy these again. Sold for $9.99 plus shipping. And these, again, there's no advertisements on the back. These are uh, trade paperbacks so they can go media. 
I got two vintage shirts here. One sold for $14.99, one sold for $15.99. I don't remember which is which, and it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. This one is Leonard Skinner. No, sir, man. I don't like that crap. I'm a rocker, dude, through and through. Here's my favorite bands, ACDC, Skinner, Def Lab. Um, not really vintage. I think it's like 2004, 2005, 2004. So it's not quite that like 90s vintage, but it is uh, a double-sided old Leonard Skinner tour t-shirt. So that sold. And then the other one is a weird tourism thing. Let me find it. I'll put this up on the screen. It's White Horse uh, Cafe in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I paid, I know where I got it, so I paid a dollar for it. Um, the Leonard Skinner shirt, I paid 75 cents for at a yard sale. Um, and they sold for $15.99 and $14.99 free shipping. This is the second video in a row where I'm saying, I sold these bib overalls a couple hours after I sold them. Overalls are hot either for old man uh, farmers or young women wear them too. Um, and so I pick up overalls anytime I find them. Most of the time our Goodwill prices them the same as blue jeans, but generic over any generic overalls in good condition will sell for around $30, 25 to $35. And I mean, they can go higher obviously and they sell fairly quick. So anytime I find overalls, I pretty well pick them up. These were hanging on the shelf. I didn't even notice that they had the tag until they were, until I got them home. And so I listed them and they sold less than a day, 12 hours or something like that. So if you find overalls, pick them up. I think we're gonna say that's good whether or not it is coffee. Coffee is good. Um, somebody asked me about shipping media. And so I wanted to show you that it's nothing. Um, I'll, I do it with what I have. And so uh, these comic books specifically, I was going to show you what I do. I buy these by the hundred. These are eight by six by four. If you're getting into doing any kind of volume, this is the way to go. Yeah. So I just use what I have. I have these four JSA books. I put a business card in the pages like a bookmark. And then I take the books and I stick them in here. And I fold that down. And then I pinch the sides because that's what's going to act like protector. And I always have this shrink wrap. I bought this for one project one time. And I keep buying it. And then, like, I just allow that to kind of pinch it up together on the one side and then the other as I'm going around. And it keeps it. And it keeps them from moving and it adds that layer of protection. And then I'll slip this in a poly bag. If I had. A whole bunch of extra. Sometimes I'll fold the top over. It'll add a little rigidity. Uh, if I had the small, a smaller book, and if I felt like I needed to, and I don't really on this one, I might wrap it in a uh, a layer or two of bubble wrap. This is a really stout package, and so I'll just slide it into a poly mailer. And then I sometimes I put a sticker in the package. Sometimes I use these stickers like a label to say, look, you bought it from the coolest shop on the internet. Ta-da! Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This is my pile of 
I am the most disorganized person in the world. And so, like, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. A milk crate, a crate, and then my shipping stuff. And that's ready to go out stuff. I'm almost done. All right, well, I think that's going to conclude our video for the day. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you on the next one. Um, but I'm digging through this. I know that these are all the way on the bottom. So this segment will probably sound like I need some uh, Iron Man, these, Stanley Iron Man. So now I'm really curious what me, 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 me sounds like in sped up mode. Sound like